Hello everybody and welcome back to another Houdini tutorial. My name is Kate and today we're still going over our protein toolkit. Um, the purpose of these mini videos is kind of to document everything that's going on in the toolkit so you can use it if you get lost or confused about how something might work. Um, as well as how you might approach something if you wanted to build a specific diagram. I thought it might be fun before we dive into this example, as today we are going over the charge animate amino acid, uh, atomic properties, and ionic properties saw. So uh, before we get into that, let's dive up to here. So if you're on my Patreon, this uh, page might seem familiar to you. Basically, I thought it might be fun to go through all the stuff that I kind of have planned out for this toolkit so far that I'm still working with. You can see the stuff that I've already flagged, stuff that I'm kind of continuing to work on, or things that I'm kind of adding into the toolkit as itself. Um, one of my want lists is do SVG to Houdini, which is actually possible, but I right now building something like that without, you know, copying something else, someone else's work is a little bit of a challenge because you don't want to steal somebody else's importing tools or something like that. But I also want to build help docs per HDAs because there's a really cool thing where if you go into Houdini, and you right click on any HDA, you'll see a help menu. If you go to help, and if you wait a few seconds, a little page should appear. In this case, it's going to say 404 page not found because we haven't built a page for our HDAs, but I, you can manually build them. So that is something that's going to be coming in the future generations of this toolkit. But with all that knowledge in mind, let's get started. So after you first brought in your protein information, which you can do through a file shop and by translating the protein to world space, you can drop down an atomic properties shop. Now we've kind of talked about this previously. This node allows for basically all functionality uh, when applying information from the periodic table onto your elements or atoms. So if you do color on, um, you might notice there's this little tab here called Metal Group. Metal Group will allow you to showcase all the uh, elements that fall into different metal groups in the periodic table. So you can see if we go to Display Options, go to Geometry, and make the point size bigger, you can clearly see that all of these are non-metal colors, and we do have a halogen in the mix. So that's really cool to see, and it, down here, we also have a green, which I believe is an alkaline earth metal. So you can see how they're scattered throughout the protein. The next thing you can do is isolate by earth metal. So if you want to go alkali, we could do that. If you wanted to do non-metals, we could only isolate the non-metals. If we wanted to go none, we can do that. We have also have the option of model on, which will create a model of the overall protein. If you want to delete any point attributes that are generated through this HDA, you can do it right here as well. The next thing you can look into is atom size. This is where you can customize your atomic size if you feel like it. Now, I would say these, is kind of, these scalings are kind of up to you. They're kind of base P scale that you can create for these specific kind of elements, but I would also say if you don't need to adjust them, don't bother. If we go to atomic properties, this is also where you can start to visualize other parts of the periodic table, such as electronegativity. So if we go to geometry spreadsheet, and we go to electron negativity, we can see the highest value is 3.44. Then lowest value is one. So if we go to scene view, this is what it now looks like on a more accurate scale. You can also visualize the density of all the atoms. And if you go to, okay, if we go to density, so many parameters here. And that's unfortunately a downfall with this toolkit. And now we can build the correct density ranges. And that would be the correct density ranges of the protein. The next thing you can do is atomic mass. So as you can see here, everything is red, so we need to dial in the atomic mass correctly. So if we go to atomic mass, we can see the highest is like 40 point something, or 40.075, or 78, my bad. 
and the lowest is 12.0.11. So now if we go to scene view, this is what our structure looks like from the atomic mass scale. Down here we have a few more options and let's fill them out so you can see them individually. So now we have boiling points. So boiling points is, it doesn't really change too much, but basically the lowest value in this case would be negative 96, 196. And the highest boiling points would be 4827. So once again, you can look at that in the viewer and see which are the hottest kind of, or the, you know, the elements that take the longest to boil. And you might notice that some of these groups overlap with your metals groups. And this is a great way, way to see those overlaps by turning and flicking these on and off. So totally give it a try. Next one is melting point. So melting point is the melting point of any element on the periodic table. So if we go here, we know the melting point, the lowest melting point is negative 219. And if we go up here, it's 3550. And once again, this is what it would kind of look like. You can see it looks very similar to the boiling point. So if we turn that off and turn that back on, you'll notice that maybe some of those elements carry like the same ranges as the boiling point. So now let's go to charge. Charge is a little bit different. So let's see, um, it's got negative three and four would be the highest number. So let's go to scene view and that's what it looks like. You can see that our halogen atom right there actually has the highest value in the range. So that's really interesting from kind of a science perspective. Now let's go to van der Waal radius and see what the values are there. So van der Waal would be right here. So the highest would be 2.31 and 1.52. Now, if you're wondering how, where these values are coming from, and once again, on a tangent, you can see that halogen just light up the entire um, model. But if you're wondering where these ranges and these values come from, if we go inside the Atomic Properties SOP, you can see that I have really manually coded all of this into here. So the entire periodic table of elements is co now coded into Houdini. So this is a very valuable SOP. It took three weeks in my life and I'll never get them back. Um, that's all tongue in cheek. Now let's move on to the Ionic Properties. So the Ionic Properties um, show the ionization energies of all the elements. Um, currently, you can only really visualize up to three ranges of ionization energies. A lot more elements have more than three, uh, but this was just to keep everything simple for now so I could come back to it and you know still work with this. Um, so if you go to the first one, this is actually an attribute you can also visualize in the geometry spreadsheet. So let's go find our ionization energies. You can find them right here. So we know the highest one is 1404.3, which is great. And the lowest in this case would be 589.8. And now that we've kind of flipped these from the lowest to the highest, also over here, I'm just gonna fill these three out so we can skim through them really fast. And that looks correct as well. Scrolling down here. Three point five. That looks correct, and the lowest is three three five seven. That's good. So now, if we turn this back, our first ionization energy. That's what this looks like, and you can can see the ionization energy of our halogen group is actually every very different from the rest of the structure. So this is what I was saying when you can tell once you start working with these tools, like where the different elements actually lie within the structure because they light up differently under different visualizer. Let's go here to the second ionization energy. And once again, you can see like what parts of the structures kind of remain the same. 
and that's pretty much it. Now let's go down to charge, animate, and chart amino animate. So amino animate is really fun. It allows you to animate this by the temperature factor. So if we go into our geometry spreadsheet, you're going to spend a lot of time here and you go to the temperature factor. This is where you can actually dial in the values of the temperature. So 8.1 and the lowest is 3.53. Uh, this is where you can kind of view the temp overall temperature of the structure and where the hottest elements actually are. And you can see the core of the structure actually doesn't really move a lot. It's really everything else around it on the edges. Now you can also dial in the amplitude if you don't want to go too fast. You can also turn off the visualizer if you don't want to see it. And you can also turn on atomic coloring. So this allows you to see the different elements and their temperature values in the temperature ranges. So all the ones that are colored are nitrogen, carbon, oxygen. So you can see the temperature values of those atoms. Now you can also turn on temperature labels to see the average minimum and maximum temperatures in the structure without having to go to your geometry spreadsheet. So if you zoom up here, they should be right there. And that's pretty much it for that one. Now, if you go over to charge animate, it's pretty much the same setup as the amino animate, but it works with charges. So this I actually think is the correct range for our charge. If we were to go to, where's charge? Cool, bro, where is it? Okay, cool. Yep, it is coming through. So this is what the overall charge kind of looks like. And you can see how fast it's moving. Um, you can turn the charge viz on and off. You can even add labels if you wanted to, to show the min and max charge of everything and the final amplitude. So those are basically the overall four um, nodes that we are talking about today. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.